everybody. I'm Jarrett Reddick. And this is a podcast. Jarrett goes to the movies. Hopefully you have seen or heard one of my many musical endeavors. And if you have, then you know how much I love movies. This is movie commentary with no movie knowledge. This podcast is me and my friend Rich talking about movies that we like. But my name's on it because I'm famous. This is Jarrett goes to the movies. Still. Okay, we're starting now. See, one eyed Willie stole treasure once. And it was full of rubies and, and emeralds and diamonds. Diamonds. And then he loaded it all up onto his ship. And then they sailed away into the sunset. Until the British king, see, he found out about it. And then he set up this whole armada to go out after him. And then the armada, it took him a couple weeks. But then they caught up with Willie. And, and then there was a whole big war between the armada and Willie's ship, the Inferno. And th- during the firefight, there was just guns bursting here and cannons bursting there. And then Willie fled because he didn't want to stay around because he knew he'd get killed if he stayed around. And then he got into this cave. And, the, and then the British, they, they blew up the walls all around him. And, and he got caved in. And he's been there ever since. Forever? Forever. And ever? Trapped. Wow. You sound just as corny as Dad does. Holy crap, guys. I mean, I am so excited about this week. My name is Jarrett. With me, as always, is Rich. Hello. And Rich is unshaven this week. You can't see that. This is good <laughs> podcasting. It's just Brillo pad on your face in, in, in salt and pepper. How am I unshaven this week? Are you always unshaven? Yeah, I, 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 I guess I, I have a that. beard. It's called a beard, I think. Oh, uh, well, this week, this week it looks different. I All feel right. like you trimmed it. No, I Did didn't you? No? trim it. I it's, think there's little splotchy places all over the there's place. There's no splotchy places. There's splotchy there's places. There's no splotchy places. I there. had a shaving incident this week where I uh, <laughs> tried to make my beard look like my brother-in-law's oh beard, my and it like shifted into. Okay, yeah. Don't ever try to look like your brother-in-law. It's just no, not gonna happen. No, I get happen. that. I'm not a Gap model. <laughs> like I'm a mind the Gap model. You know, I don't know what that means, but I bet in fucking England they're dying laughing right now. <laughs> this week's movie is The Goonies. And what the fuck is a Goonie? Because they don't ever say that. They don't ever. Uh, they don't address it. It's I, like, it's a Goonie. You should I just know what the, the same fuck thing. Goonie and is. And in fact, when they get called Goonies, I even thought to myself, like, what exactly I is that? I kept waiting and waiting and waiting the for them to define says, what the fucking Goonie was. I'm not a Goonie. And yeah. And there it is. We don't know. Uh, we still do not know. We don't know. I don't, like to I, you this know what? Day. I mean, are we sure? Can we Google it and just find out? Like, no. What I mean, I, the only thing I saw was they had an oath, and they mentioned a goon doc, which maybe is a play so off they're of from, Boondock. Well, I they're from like the, they're I from the Goon Dock. What's the Goon Dock? It's where they all live. It's where they all live. And that's the only be, thing I could figure it's out. It's going to become a area course. was called the Goon Dock. Here's what I'm saying to myself: while uh, while they're losing their houses, and we find out that it's going to be a, a golf course, I'm just like, oh man. That would be cool to live on that golf course. <laughs> you, know? Right. you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Let's hurry that development up. Yeah, we're doing the Goonies. In order to save their home from foreclosure, a group of misfits set out to find a pirate's ancient treasure. This movie, to me, uh, and to, I think, most kids my age, had one of those effects of just being like, this is your favorite movie. This is like, this. what's your favorite movie? It's The Goonies. This is the greatest movie of all time. It's the it's the one we watched on cable anytime it was on. Have you ever noticed that if you have the DVD to a movie and you it's, it's in your collection and it's alphabetized and shit, you never, ever watch it? However, if you're switching through and it's on TBS, well, even yeah. with commercials, you'll fucking stop and watch it. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, it's because people are afraid of commitment. You guys, I mean, you have to is? really commit to taking it out, putting it in. I'm going to sit down for two hours and watch this motherfucker. When it's on TV, oh, that scene's cool, and it just stays on. I mean, that's the whole thing with TV versus, like, Netflix and everything. That's the only reason I think TV's still around is because it's just on. You know what? I feel like I've never met a guy who didn't like the idea of taking it out and putting it in. <laughs> ever. <laughs> In the history of meeting dudes. I like putting it in and taking it out. (laughs) What the fuck is happening right now? (laughs) All right, so this movie is called The Goonies. I learned a few things about this film as we went into the credits. I didn't actually remember that it was a Steven Spielberg movie. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it's because at that time I didn't give a shit. 
You know, so we're back right. in 1985. Is that right? We're uh, yeah, 1985. 1985 movies. So let's talk about when we saw it first. I saw this one first with some kids from band camp. In no way is this going to turn into a flute and the pussy joke. <laughs> True story. I saw it with my friend Eric, and then we went with two girls. Uh, one was named Nicole, and one was named Tanya. And then uh, also our friend Derek was there, and uh, we went and saw The Goonies after band camp. This is that kind of movie to me. Where I'm, so I'm thinking I'm 13, 14 years old. And Casey actually asked me last night as we were watching it. And again, I think I say this every week, but one of the cool things is being able to share the movie with right. with her. And and it's something, maybe she's seen it before, maybe she hasn't. But like getting her perspective on it as we're going. Did she see it before? Cool. She had seen it before, okay. yeah. But I don't, I don't think it had the same impact because there's no way it could because it came before. But do you remember being in like that sort of that age so so we're the same age so do you remember seeing those kind of movies and just be like wanting to just be that kid and i would leave the theater and be like okay from now on on our bikes we'll only do (laughs) adventures that make sense i don't remember seeing this you don't no i don't remember watching this at all wow i i don't even think this this movie had a huge impact on me i think i think that this movie over time Hearing people say how much it made an impact on them Mm -hmm. made an impact on me. The funny thing is, is that watching it now after it being on cable for many, many years and seeing it and and knowing it and knowing the repetitiveness of it and like just and knowing all the jokes and and we'll get into all the things that, of course, every movie I say in my everyday conversations, this one. I don't think I got the bigness of the whole thing. So to me, the adventure was bigger than the message and the, and bigger than the sure, outcome, sure. okay, as a child and watching it through the years of seeing it on a cable. And then when I watched it this time, the adventure was so small in comparison <laughs> to just the interactions between these kids and knowing what was going on in the real world and all of this and just like this quest for winning the lottery pretty much, right. you know, to save the town. And I <laughs> I love doing this podcast so much because I love taking away something completely different. Like this movie has been a part of me for so long and I, I totally don't, I mean, it's not like a sentimental thing, but I don't know, maybe it is. It's, and there's a couple of other ones. I mean, like stand by me and things like that, where the outsiders, you know, where you're just like, that's what we're going to do. Like we're going to start a bike club and we're going to go ride around and do adventures and just discover shit. <laughs> and like after this movie, we'd be riding around, we'd see something in the woods, but it's a spray paint can. Obviously this leads to something. It's graffiti. Holy shit. We you, fucking did it. You were in eighth grade, right? This was the summer of your eighth summer grade Summer of year. my eighth grade year. So yeah. we already knew those My kids. point, I'm going into the ninth grade. So I'm technically in high school, but it was a junior high. It was a ninth grade junior high. And I was all about the girls. I mean, the I was, girls right. were starting to discover rich, and I didn't give a shit about pop culture. Right. I didn't give a shit about movies. I didn't see this movie, I don't know, till like years, years later, probably. Now, is this the, this is when you were in Kansas, you were popular right. for a little yeah, while? for a year. And it, so, like, you weren't popular until you got there. No, and no, then, no, I was the, the biggest reject nerd ever. And then what happened after you left Kansas? Uh, I went to Colleen and there. Holy shit, Colleen, Texas? <laughs> Oh, my God. Kim Hall and Emily will yell at me for this. But I don't – I mean, I wasn't popular. They're saying I was popular, but I was not popular. I mean, I, I was like – I was like hanging on to the edge of a building that's – the top is popular. I'm like hanging on with my fingernails. You know what I mean? That mm-hmm. That's how I felt about popularity in that time. It was like I was touching it. People would talk to me, but I didn't feel like I was in the popularity. Here's what I'm going to say to my kid now. Just I just figured this out. So if it's a 16-story building, son, <laughs> and you're hanging from the top of popularity – <laughs> Why not be happy with being on the eighth floor? And that's what because I should when, have been. Because when you fall, you may break an ankle. And that's, that's but exactly, you're not gonna die. Not, but I mean, you know, I'm looking at it at perspective of today. But then it was either get on the top of the building or or you may as well die. But going back and changing everything, I would say I'd be on the eighth floor. This movie was directed by Richard Donner, and I love the fact that the story was by Steven Spielberg. I mean, yeah, he wrote the story, right? How do you rate Steven Spielberg? Anyway, as far as writing, directing, producing, I mean, he's like the biggest based, filmmaker of all time. Yeah, based right? on this movie, I rate him shitty. <laughs> what a fucking asshole. No, but seriously, Steven Spielberg, when you hear yeah. that name, what is and it? Chris, Christopher, or Chris Columbus, I guess, is... Um... He he wrote the screenplay based off of I love the that, short story. I love that that it's Chris Columbus and he's like 
you know, in this adventurous pirate ship movie and it's Chris Columbus, you <laughs> Chris know, Columbus, just like, right. in all seriousness, Steven Spielberg, you hear that name. Yeah. I mean, what it, does it mean it's weight. when you hear it is, but it's bigger than that. It's as big as it gets. Is there any bigger well, name he was coming off of Raiders of the Lost Ark with sure. George Lucas? Yeah. And he's like, let's make one for kids. I'm right. assuming that's exactly what the executive meeting was. Was, was like, Raiders what? of the Lost Ark before this? Yes, one? it was. So a data two came from that years. I can't remember and, exactly, uh, but it was years before this. What does Steven Spielberg mean to movies today? I think it's legacy more than sure it is. So now it's that he puts his name on something because he believes yeah. in it and you buy it. You know, it's kind of like J.J. Abrams now. You see his name on a lot of things, but you're going, eh, he's probably just the putting his name on it. Sure. Then being involved in it. Uh, Richard Donner directed it. Uh, so opening scene. I think the cool thing about the the jailbreak is that it's almost slapstick. The sound effects they use yeah. throughout the movie sure. are cartoon sound effects. They are. And the soundtrack is sort of like that as well. Yeah. I actually found the jailbreak something that I really didn't pay attention to when I was a kid. I forgot, forgot and, it was even part of the movie. As, as I watch it as an adult, I found it hilarious because I love the fact that he's hung himself on a piece of pipe. I, the handle. I don't have the handle open the lock. I love the fact that I don't have the handle open the lock. I love the fact that I told Casey this like, as I was watching, I was just like, the funniest thing ever to me, and I laughed hysterically, was as he's coming out of the door of the jail. There's just bars on the mm -hmm. door of the jail that should have been closed, like <laughs> at the on the outside of the building, you know. And the jail uh, was like the a funny thing was is he put he puts one guy to sleep and he's just walking out the front door, right, just right. like just and one then, guard, and then seventeen guards walk out, of and this they're all putting their jackets five on. By seven jail, yeah, everybody putting their jackets. <laughs> yes, on. they they're don't putting notice. their hats on. They're yeah. putting their jackets. They're on. They're literally criminals right there. Don't don't pull your guns. Do not pull your guns. Whatever. Put your you hat and your jacket and on. your jacket, and then just. <laughs> chase the car oh my God, past all of the characters. I love, uh, I do love the introduction of all the characters. Again, I think a lot of the comedy in this movie very slapstick. is very slapstick. I mean, the pizza on the window when they see, when It's Chunk a cartoon. Sees it's a cartoon. Sure. I get that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's all it is. It's it just could a cartoon have been, with live action It could have been Scooby-Doo. Yeah. But, you know the Goonies, right? I get that. Yeah. I think that's a that's a good description. The the mom is from Throw Mama from a Train. How terrifying is that lady? That she is awful. Yeah. I mean, just her persona. But you know, I bet you in person she's like the nicest way. lady that has ever lived in the history of the world. Or but she yes, could put out right. cigarettes on your forehead. One right. of the two. And I remember actually when Throw Mama from the Train came out. I I actually it you know we've talked about my movie anxiety. Right. I wasn't in. A, I've never seen a Danny DeVito movie that didn't make me anxious. <laughs> and now it's the fucking bad girl, fucking Goonies, <laughs> and throw Billy Crystal into the mix, and all of a sudden it's hilarious. I don't really know that I get I fucking went, but I don't know that I got it. I'm not sure we're going to do that one as a podcast. <laughs> so, so Astoria is a real town. You know, Astoria is such a, a an historical name of things because what i think about when i think about astoria is the Def club Leopard. no the club that we well, I, is that a thing uh, story story <laughs> when you're near actually the club that we used to play in london was called the astoria oh, okay. and uh, it was this amazing club it's where everybody used to go and see punk shows and every band who played there has a song about the fact that it doesn't exist anymore did i mention i'm not a fan of punk <laughs> yeah my favorite thing is we would do the sold out show there it'd be like 2600 people in london and we would be done playing and they are literally trying to get everybody out everybody out everybody out and then all of a sudden this really small light up sign would just come up over the stage and it just said gay <laughs> True story. And then the gay dancers would come out and all the dudes would roll in. And then people would touch wieners. And it what? was the fucking greatest after show of all time. Because you just walk through and just people watch. And my God, is it awesome to see that. But anyway, they've bulldozed the Astoria since then. So I love how the, 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 you know, the police chase is going through the city. And the car chase goes by... 
uh, Mouth's house. Now, his dad in the scene is played by a camera guy. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. true story. So they they didn't have a guy to play his dad. So they have the the even plumber. at the end on the beach. Yep, same, same, guy, same guy rolls in. So they have the plumber guy go down most there. Most of the people, most of the parents on the beach are their actual parents of the real kid, right? That you know, especially the ones that do not talk. There's actually a couple of camera guys in this movie. That's hilarious. Corey Feldman's dad is played by Probably because a his camera dad guy. was like. On coke somewhere. Uh, on coke and just <laughs> trying to get him on all the coke. And... <laughs> yeah. All right, you ready to talk Corey's? I feel like we got to do it. First of all, I got to say, say what you will about Corey Feldman. That motherfucker works his ass off. I looked, he never missed a year. From today until this movie... Never missed a year of work. Usually it's two or three things. Have to agree. I agree so wholeheartedly that I don't feel like that the two Corys should have been grouped together, except for the fact that they worked together so many times. Lot, yeah. Think about Corey Feldman movies that you love. Stand By Me, right? You love that movie? Nope. What the fuck are you talking? <laughs> That's next week. The, the Burbs. He is so great I'm in the I'm not even burbs. sure I've seen the burbs. Are you fucking serious? serious? Anyway, so the two Corys, I get it. I'm glad that uh, Corey Feldman didn't die. I Corey's just want to point out that Casey brought us beer on ice, and that is amazing. She brought us beer on ice in a uh, to-go, like, cleaning right. supplies thing. Oh, it's in the cleaning She's supplies She's the fucking thing. best. That is amazing. What what are you going to use to clean now? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't even answer that. All right. So uh, the car chase, great opening scene. It's rolling through town. You get to see Mouth and his dad is working on the plumbing. He squirts him in the face. It's hilarious. You see Chunk. He puts the pizza on the window. And that's Chunk's <laughs> intro into all of it. Like, yeah. God, it you're sets, not going to believe what I saw. It sets the tone for Chunk, which is amazing. He, it does. He shines in this movie, outshines everyone else in this movie. It's Chunk's movie. It, re it really is. It, I don't know. I, I will say this. Uh, it's Chunk's movie, but Casey and I talked about this last night while watching. Mikey is perhaps the most likable character and lovable in the history of film. Every, there's nothing negative about Mikey. There's not one negative thing. Not one. Goonies never say die. Except for that one. <laughs> no, but the thing, what, what he's, you know what's fucked up about the that is I had a brother that was five years older than me, and if I was just like, Goonies never die, he'd just be like, shut the fuck up and get out of here, you know? But his brother listened to him <laughs> for some so, reason. So, it's so, I don't know. I, I understand why you say it. I just don't know if I agree with you. I do love the, uh, the, the two stories that go hand in hand. We'll get into that in just a second. But uh, Fucking, we haven't talked about Joey Payne. Pants. Joey Pants is Guido the Killer Pimp in Risky Business. He's the right. perhaps right. one of the greatest character actors right. of all the time. I know all him from the time Matrix and all mostly, the time. But whatever. I don't. You know what? I've never seen the Matrix. Oh my god, Jarrett! But that stop, dude is stop so, talking. Dude, he is so good in everything that he's ever been in. It's so amazing. Your neighbor's wiping his face because he just can't believe you haven't seen the Matrix. Come on. We should literally stop. I you want to hear something? I got to tell you something right now. I love the way that you say literally. No. <laughs> now, hold on. Hold I was on. just about to and explain it. Hold on. And, and, and I do have to say this. So uh, <laughs> this week on Howard Stern, Christy Brinkley was on there. And it's super weird because she is, you know, arguably one of the prettiest women that's ever yeah, lived in the definitely. history of the world. Yeah. No, like no. and you become and Rick. You, yes, you become, thank you. I you say become, it from Parks and Rec. The, anyway, but she says literally no, in her interviews, it's Rob Lowe. That is yes. literally the nicest thing yes, ever. Yes, that's where I get it from. Yeah. So Jackie was ye was yelling he hasn't at me. Got into that show. <laughs> Jackie was yelling at me. She goes, "You know, it's literally right." And yes. I'm like, "Yes, no. I know it's literally." He's but I'm saying it like office. Parks and Rec. Rob Lowe, who I think is hysterical. But yeah, that's yeah. where I get it from. That is literally. The I was actually going to explain that right before you said that. Well, the thing is, is that I heard that interview and she says it so many times and I just kept thinking. And she says literally. Too? Oh, literally. Yeah. And I mean, but she says it over and over and over she again. She just watches Parks and Rec. Yeah. yeah. I just, she, she I just, heard, I just show. heard him say it so many times and I think it's hilarious that I just, I guess I just started what saying it. What Rich is like doing that. is he's stealing things he thinks is cool so that he can get back to his Kansas popularity at some I point. I don't like when the mic picks her up as well. <laughs> Go ahead. Let that one sink in. Go ahead. <laughs> So, just to clarify, the film's premise features a band of preteens who live in the goondocks. Wait, they're in a band? It's the goondocks of 
Astoria, Oregon. So that that's the whole thing is they are the goondocks. They are what the, the fuck is the goondocks? They didn't it's explain just where that, they live. Though. It doesn't matter though. It it's, does it's matter because you, know. you can't have something. The name of the movie, the most pinnacle point in the movie, Goonies never die. If you don't explain what the fuck a goon is, no one knows what a goon is. That's absolutely not true because here's the thing: the the movie The Outsiders, nobody has ever called an outsider, ever. But that makes sense. We're the outsiders. It doesn't make any, We're outside it, it, of the norm. It doesn't norm. make any different sense Fucking than somebody goon. being a goondock or whatever. Like, and you know what? Maybe it is slipped in there at some point. And we just didn't I listened. catch it. I didn't hear. Here's the thing. Like, it. I will say this: that that the first thirty minutes of dialogue moves so. Fucking fat. They say so these motherfuckers much say shit. they talk over each other. This is the most All infuriating the time. movie I've ever watched right. because they won't shut the fuck up. Right. They talk over each other constantly. It's and constant. as a matter of fact, there was a reunion interview with all the cast members, and they talk about Richard Donner, and they're like, "What do you think of Richard Donner?" And they were like, "Volume," because he kept yelling at him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Because yeah, they were constantly talking over each other. Because it's a group of young boys, and that's right. exactly what it would sound like. Because we have them running up and I, all over our house. She's right exactly now. right. I, I honestly think... And I actually said this that movie, to her. This movie, I think, is the reason why there's a saying in Hollywood that says, never do a movie with kids or animals. No, and I think this is the reason. I, because, oh I, I 100% God. disagree. Like, And all of these guys went on to do other things that are great. But Casey even said yesterday as we were watching, she goes, I'm like, holy shit, I can't understand the dialogue. Like, I'm tr- so trying to keep up. I want to write down quotes. She goes, right. This is there's what no, it sounds like in our house. Oh, my God. And you're getting, right. Getting a clip from this stupid movie was ridiculous because they're just constantly talking over. But it's so real, and that's the whole entire point. Like, you guys are talking about this movie coming out in 1985 whenever you guys were in around eighth grade and middle school. When you watched this movie, you didn't feel that way. You just feel this way now because you're an adult and you're like, holy shit, you're a bunch of annoying kids. I do not disagree with you. I, I when think you're that's younger, true. it's magical. You're like yeah, no. hanging out with these kids. They're stupid. They're poking fun and they're being awesome. I believe that. And that's what makes it feel and, and that's like probably you're why part I didn't when you're con- a kid. That's probably why I didn't connect with it right away because I watched it when I was older. And, and I think a lot of people connected because they watched it when it first came out and they, they were at that sort of age. It's like the opposite with Harry Met Sally. When I was younger and tried to watch Harry Met Sally... Right. I turned it off because yeah. what the hell are they talking about? Yeah, they're like babbling on about stuff. You get older, you're like, oh, yeah, adult exactly. words. Okay, it kind of makes sense, but exactly. yeah, it's the opposite. I don't think I figured it out uh, when I was young. I mean, I guess I knew that their houses were going to get foreclosed on, and they, you know, I don't, I don't guess I put it all together. And and even now, it seems silly. Like all of a sudden, like you're just the whole neighborhood's just gonna go. Away. Like, why are they foreclosing in a whole fucking neighborhood? Um, did you watch it just with Casey, not with your kids? No, I didn't watch it with the kids. Watching anything with my kids is like watching the fucking first scene of this fucking movie. <laughs> you can't hear anything from the television. Nobody's making any sense, and everybody's on a different page. Right. However, everybody's just like. What did they just say? I have no idea because you were just talking or whatever. And Casey would just be like, guys, your dad's trying to watch what? this. Like, everybody be quiet. Let's all be together or whatever. And then everybody's like, bah, 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 bah. we got to do this. Yeah, and like, did you what give them popcorn? What did she say? You know, popcorn. yada, yada. And then and the no, dogs. just crunching and talking. It's, the, it's crazy. It's fucking crazy. Ugh. All right. So I watched this, obviously, when I was younger. I don't know when it was, but I know I watched it. It was probably on cable or a VHS tape or something. And I honestly don't think I saw it again. I mean, I remember. I remember that. I remember Sloth. I remember the ship at the end. I remember all the key points. And then it was more like everyone loves the Goonies. Everyone loves the Goonies. And I think that sunk into me that Goonies was amazing. Yeah, I saw it. It was amazing. And since everyone else loved it, I think I sort of absorbed that I loved it too, which I may have loved it. I don't I don't remember. But last year we watched it with my then wife's daughter and she was turning 13. And so we thought this was a great movie. To see. You know, it was like, oh, you're becoming a young adult and you've got to see these movies that we loved as a kid. So we watched it and I did enjoy it watching it through her eyes. I really did. I enjoyed it watching through her eyes. When I watched it this time around, I mean, it was a labor. I was like, oh my God, this is bad. (laughs) See, I feel the same way because one thing about like Jack is that one day we were at home and the Goonies were on TV like they are on. I'm like, oh, have you ever seen the Goonies? He's like, no. I'm like, let's watch the Goonies, right? And so it's on opening scene. (laughs) I mean, it's so quick to them finding this old restaurant and walking in it. That lady walked up, like he said... And he did not want to walk anymore. Like, he was just like, nope, sorry, not interested. <laughs> Mind you, he's not eighth grade. At this point, he's eight. Or, right. you know, 
She was and scared or just... It, it just creeped him out. Creeped he, didn't, him out. he wasn't interested in it, but it was kind of cool because I remember whenever I was younger, it was creepy. That woman was scary, but it, I don't know. She it, is... Pretty- but to see it through a kid's eyes, but I think it's a good point. Just his reaction to it and her reaction to it is that... Like, well, she Jared, loved it. Well, Jarrett My... said that maybe because it like is constantly always played and constantly was in, you know, on cable and all over the place and that maybe newer generations don't have the same feeling as like, you know, maybe you guys did when you were kids, but I completely disagree. I remember watching the Goonies for the first time and I remember how like magical it was when they found right. the wishing well and there's all the gold right. and they're doing all these things. I mean, and same with The Outsiders and the same with Stand By Me. I think that those movies have a tendency to really hold so much emotion that they can really go through generations and have that much power over like a child mind, you know? Like it's, I don't know, it's cool. She's fucking spot on. The thing is, is that it sucks that the Goonies didn't have any sort of impact on your life. That sucks. It's like a poor man's Raiders of the Lost Ark, No, it's not, though. It really is. It's really not. Like, there's a goddamn fucking guy with a whip and a hat, and he's gonna, like, (laughs) you know, like... This is Jarrett not liking Raiders of the Lost Ark. I like Raiders of the Lost Ark. No, I don't think you do. I saw it. I saw Raiders of the Lost Ark. No, you saw it once. I saw it. I saw Raiders of the Lost Ark. Right. You saw saw it it once. You didn't live it like I did. I've seen it like 80 times, I I, swear. Every time I can possibly watch it, I watch it. I thought Data was amazing. I thought Data was a much better character in the Goonies, but. As opposed to what? Short Round or whatever? Yeah, whatever the fuck. The the, the second Raiders Lost Ark sucked balls. The first and the third were amazing movies. Like one of the the best movies ever. What is it? What do you mean? Indiana Jones. Never watched them. Never seen one. Did you know that? You what? Never have. Oh my God. Not even the new one. That's (laughs) it. We're not doing Matrix. That's like as worse as not seeing the Matrix. I don't know. I'm a girl. It really is. That's like not seeing Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars. uh, I've seen it once over here. What? You, you've seen Star Wars once. Big yeah, giant Star Wars Vita. rolling through a cave. The Goonies, I already saw that. I don't need any let's blow this thing and let's go home. I, I fucking know Star Wars. I got that shit. <sighs> We're going to have to do Star Wars before it comes out. The thing that I love about the fact when they uh, when they get actually get into Mikey's house is it's it's so normal. It's chump. I just saw the most amazing thing in my entire life. First, you got to do the truffle shuffle. Come on. Do it. The funny thing about that is, is how did Mouth get into the house? Like, why does... Yeah. Yeah, how did he get in there? <laughs> all, you know what I mean? Uh, he just climbed over the fucking fence. No, I get that. I thought about that, too. I do have it's to say this. So door, I had I had childhood asthma, of course, because I fucking oh, had everything Jesus. wrong with me. Like, fat kid. It, like, anything... <laughs> And I wasn't even fat when I had it. Like, I, I feel like I lost the <laughs> asthma after I got fat. It's like, eat a, bunch of, eat a bunch of fucking pizzas and your asthma will go away. <laughs> Jesus Christ, children, listen. Well, but my brother made fun of me all the time. Everything was just like, oh, he's got his inhaler. You know, let's call the emergency room. This and this and this. Like, he never bought in. And 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 my mom would ask, like, are you wheezing? And I'd I'd take a minute and be like, you see, because you can feel it. If you've ever wheezed, yeah. you can feel I've wheezed if before. if your lungs can't I've take it once. And every single time he'd just be like, Jesus Christ, you know, like what the fuck? And <laughs> you know as soon as my mom would turn around, he'd punch me in the kidney. <laughs> you know, and, and my brother loved me so much. But I think what is great about all of this whole scene that takes place in their house is that you get to know all the characters, everybody's dynamic comes forth, and also you get to know the relationship between Bran and Mikey. Boys, this is Rosalita. Rosalita's going to help us with the packing just until my arm is better. But you know, Rosalita was actually in a lot of shit. Dude, I saw her on the street as she's almost getting run over by the... I thought she was just some extra. I forgot that she was Rosalita later. And Dude, I was she like, has been in she's every been in movie. Everything. Everything. One of the coolest things that happens for me is is that like as the characters are developing there in that house and you have you know, you have Mouth giving the maid the tour and you, you realize he's a jokester and he's a little shithead. Well, then, Mrs. Walsh, I speak perfect Spanish. 
And if it's any help to you, I'd be glad to communicate with Rosalind. Man, we didn't have subtitles, so we didn't actually. Oh, you want you don't know what hear. he said? No, we know what he said. Oh, you looked it up. We looked it up. Marijuana's in the top drawer. Yeah. Cocaine and speed in the bottom. Drawer. Yeah. <laughs> Always separate the drug. Right. Yeah, and then but I love the fact that they point up to the attic. You know, whatever she says about the attic, and he says, you know, this is where we're gonna stuff you. <laughs> right. But I love the development of all this. Like of all of the characters and stuff, but I also love that you get to see the relationship between Brandon and Mikey. You know, it's funny. It's like when your older brother is, he's the cool kid and you're the little shithead. It's not all the time where they do like put their arm around you and just tell you like, I love you, but it's all, I don't know. I felt it this time. You love your brother. I do love my brother, <laughs> but, and we went through a lot together, but what I was trying to say was I thought it was cool that they developed that relationship How many early. years apart are you guys? Five years. It's like the same as, as those two characters, you know, is that, that's kind of you guys' age difference. Is that the reaction that your brother would have had in that situation, he just goes, yeah. Like, I mean, obviously he's giving him yeah, shit. Yeah, but I'm going to start What's the age too. difference? Five years. So it's about, I mean, it's close. Yeah, my brother and I are 11 years apart. Oh, So yeah. we didn't even, like, barely live in the same house. You never even saw I him. I was an only child. Yeah. He was an only child. I don't even want to hear it, Rich. I get you it. know my sisters. They're four and six. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about Bran. It's Josh fucking Brolin. Yeah. He uh, made a good little career. I, I actually don't like him much as an actor. There is not one girl in the world that doesn't think he's the hottest dude that's ever lived. Really? Because I think his head is a fucking gargantuan mass Yeah, it's because he flesh. drank a bunch and it swelled up. That's what's going to happen to us, dude. Huge. And he's like small, but his head is huge. But by, by the way, red headband and the sweat, is that a... Was were we wearing that stuff? Yeah, we're doing like the sweat the shorts, shorts over, over the, the sweat, sweat pants. pants. Yeah, and the headband. Oh my god, that is just horrible. Well, I think I think the op shorts coming back are good. I think the headband coming back is bad. Right? Oh, everyone with shorts. me. Nobody, nobody in this room knows what op shorts are, but me and you. <laughs> Maybe Tim, but Come I mean on. it's that's you saw Magnum PI, right? Of course you did. Oh, you love it, Cavs. <laughs> By the way, you can see a uh, if you're listening to this, you can see a picture of Rich's Cavs on the Facebook. <laughs> One eyed Willie. Yeah, he was the most famous pirate in his time. My dad told me all about him once. This scene is so amazing because it's <laughs> It sets up a ridiculous movie. All Terribly. of a sudden, like, his dad had done all this research, and it's all right. there for the finding. This loser and, of and, a dad yeah. who can't even fucking make the house payment. Dude, that's super mean. We can't say make the house payment. What? He didn't make the house payment, obviously. Here's the thing about the whole fucking house payment. Like, why isn't anybody made their house payment? What the hell's happening? Yeah, is it Eminent Domain? Like, I used to be in a band called Eminent Domain. Really? Yeah, yeah. Someone else take it over? See, that would be irony. And so as the kids are, are all, you know, settling into the house, and my brother would be like, everybody get the fuck out of my house. Like, Bran is, is fine. He's, like, just working out with his springs, <laughs> springs. and all of this, you know? <laughs> Do you remember springs. that thing? Do you yes. remember that workout thing? Oh, my God, the springs. Name all of the workout stuff that you remember from, like, when you, so the spring <laughs> the, thing. The, the, the Olivia Newton-John uh, vibrating belt. That you put Wait, on your that's ass. A brrr, 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 brrr. That's a completely different animal right there. They, they still sell that. They still sell that at con- condoms I, I, ago. Nothing that sold in the 70s and early 80s did anything for your physique, I'm pretty sure, other than free weights. That's it. Because the vibrating thing, that did nothing. These springs things did nothing. So they let they finally let Chunk in, right? Well, well how, did, the how did they can... let him in? It's a Rube Goldberg machine. Do you know what a Rube Goldberg machine is? I do not. A Rube Goldberg machine is something that does something that's overly complex for no reason at all. It just is overly complex to be overly complex. So in order to open the gate, all they would have had to do is tie a string to the gate and pull it open. But no, they have a they have a bowling ball rolling down the, the side of the fence to hit something. It makes a chicken lay an egg, <laughs> and then the egg rolls. You know, it's like that's a Rube Goldberg. Let's talk about Mikey. I, again, I think Mikey is just this lovable, just his eyes are so big for the world and just... I believe everything that he feels, you know, like I, I just want him to succeed. I want this to happen. He, he is just the most lovable character. Maybe you're talking about Samwise Ganji. What? (laughs) Have you never seen Lord of the Rings? No, I've never seen Lord of the Rings. Oh my God, 
Let's hear it. I'm talking what about. What is wrong with you? I'm talking about Rudy. Yeah, Rudy, because it, football was in the movie, so you've seen it. Yeah. But any kind of science fiction or fantasy? No, you've never I've, seen it. I've never seen any. How have you not seen Lord of the Rings? No, I've never seen any. Everyone is going crazy right now listening what do you mean? to this. No, they're not. Yes, they're just they like, are. They're, they're like, I've never seen that either. But I did think that Mikey was just such an amazing character and just such a lovable guy, and and uh, I, and, and so. Getting back to the whole like relationship with him and his brother, and like the, the I will say this: the, you love your brother. I, <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> we you get it. Fuck shit. <laughs> Dan Zam was I a big love, impact. I love Dan Zam. <laughs> I love Dan Zam. I think this whole movie takes place the in an afternoon, right? Yeah, I mean, Same it didn't correct. take more than a day. Yeah. And he puffs on that inhaler maybe 30 times. Yeah, but, you know, at the end of the movie, he just decides, I don't need it anymore. Don't, doesn't need it anymore. He doesn't have <laughs> Which asthma. isn't a thing. No. And also, you can't do that. You can't just keep fucking huffing the asthma medicine. Right. That's the whole a thing terrible was medically message. way off base. Medically way off base, yeah. All right, so they're in the attic. The thing is, is that I think we both agree on this, is that all the evidence being there in the attic is, is a little... Odd and like every shred of evidence they ever need to do anything ever, ever to find it all in their attic. Yeah, and and it that's because a their little dad. Too much. Well, I mean, you know what? Maybe it makes sense because their dad can't even get the rent paid. You hate he the has, dad. He has the treasure, the the entire treasure. You map hate the dad in the attic. You can't stand the dad. There's there's no reason that if he can't pay the rent, that there's no way he can find the treasure. You can't too. stand the dad. You fucking <laughs> well, hate the dad. Well, obviously he's a complete idiot. You hate the dad. You can't the pay dad. the rent. Why can't find the treasure? He's got everything he needs. Why isn't the mom out there working? He probably has fucking... people like throwing jobs at him, and he still can't get it done. Oh my god. <laughs> So they do find it, and Mikey starts to put it together, and he has a realization. He's just like, hey, we could have one more adventure. Let's go do this. You know, let's go see if we can find One-Eyed Willie. Let's talk about the term One-Eyed Willie and what it means to you and I just sitting here as men. Right. Well, and I was going to bring this up later, but okay. since you already brought it up, when so, he's in the cabin thing, in the restaurant. Right. And he goes, I want to go to the quote unquote bathroom when he really doesn't want to go to the bathroom. He right. really wants to look for the, the treasure stuff. Sure. But he goes, I want to go to the bathroom. The and then he goes, stuff. One eyed Willie, I know you're down. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like now, you're going to the bathroom and you're looking for One eyed Willie. What's funny is that's the first time that he references him and talking to him uh, as if he's listening. So that's the True. first time yeah, you're right. as he's going to the restroom. And I, and I actually bought into that because at that point he like starts that. talking to him. So it's just like us talking to our dicks basically is the thing. It's just like he's talking to his dick. Oh, I've or, actually never talked to my dick, but okay. You've never had a conversation with your dick once? No. So say, oh, you know what? One time. Right? Okay. One what time. Happened? What happened? There was a girl who I almost slept with, and this is the only time this has ever happened. And I, I swear to God this is true. I couldn't get it up. Mm. This is the N only time. None of us believe that. This was that. 12 years ago. I couldn't get it up. It just wouldn't go up. And she was trying to get it up with every means possible. I left because it wasn't going to happen. I was embarrassed. I made sure that I could get it up on the way home. It got up just fine. <laughs> yeah, you had a conversation. <laughs> Six months later, we stayed friends. She called me and she said, I... I I think I gave my boyfriend herpes. And I said, you son of a bitch. And she goes, I know you're mad at me because we almost slept together. And she fucking had herpes. And it wasn't good. So you're saying your dick is smarter than you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Unbelievable. I know this is a crazy story. I, I swear to no, God. No, that's not a crazy 100% story. 100% truth. The only time ever. And it didn't get up for the girl with herpes. The only time uh, that I, I, I've actually talked to my dick a bunch, but uh, one of the main <laughs> times is like, uh, you know, like after you masturbate and like let it sit for a while or the morning <laughs> after and you go in to pee and it either shoots in the wrong direction or it looks like a cobra tongue at the same time. Dude, my shit can go backwards. My It can go like this way. Right. That's what I was saying. Towards so like, me. Do you ever just get mad at your dick and stop the stream and, like, fucking pinch it for a second and just be like, open up. Just open up and pee out like a regular I know, penis. I just, no, I just. You just pee backwards? I just pee backwards. You're basically a chick. 
No, I'm not. You can I mean, fucking pee on a wall if you're sitting on it. I know it's not it. going to talk back to me, but. We're like, researching cancer and shit. We need to be researching why piss goes back. This is a true story. She says, hey, Everett, go to the bathroom. And he goes in. He's like, I'm going to go pee. And I follow him in. And I'm like, hey, man, are you going to go by yourself? He goes, I already going. And he had pulled his pants down just enough to point his dick straight to the sky. <laughs> And as I looked over him to try to pee pee, it's not as I tried it. to as I tried to pull his pants down so that he could go, he peed in my fucking face. <laughs> but not only did he pee in my face, he peed in his own face, and he was more concerned with the pee on his face. Well, what? Yeah. I, Were you more concerned with the pee in your face? Fuck yes. Then I think yeah. it's fair. Yeah. No, the, uh, both of us were just like, Jesus Christ. And they just pissed. First just of goes all, everywhere. First of all, he beat on me the other day. Why way. are you in a position where he can pee on your face? Let I'm, him do his pee. No, I'm looking over him and trying to no, get his stop that. stuff down. Was, what are you talking about? No, face. no. Sometimes kids just got to figure that shit out. Oh, shut it. Peeing his own face? What's the worst that can happen? Him peeing in his face? Nope. Guess what? He's only going to do it once. That's not true. What? Yeah, that is not fucking true. Well, they'll just continue. It's it's like, like, that's that's like, that's like, that's like when they draw on the wall. (laughs) Well, then you guys have a special needs kid. No, that is not a fun. You haven't not peed on our seat one time. Here's what he needs. Us to pull his fucking pants down. I am going to constantly pee on your seat. I am sorry. I'll apologize now. I'm going to wipe it off every single yeah, time. you know why? Because your dad will... was like, he'll learn. Well, guess what? How old are you, Rich? <laughs> How old are you? But I have never, ever peed on my face. I'm just saying. You peed on your face and you're a baby. Get okay, it. once. You ever had that's a girl... it. Hey, have you I ever... learned. Have you ever had a girl pee on your face? Uh, no. Have but you according to you, even, squirting even... is peeing on your face. So... No, not according to just me. No. According it's... to you plus some article that you read, I guess. Yeah, science. Um, well, like, it's yeah, pee. science is wrong a lot. You didn't even let anybody pee on your face back when you were popular in Kansas. <laughs> they get the treasure map. They decide they're going to go on the quest. Older brother, it gets left behind. So they tie him yeah. to a chair. Which is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Totally Those ridiculous. Those things are so springy. That could never happen. <laughs> no, yeah. In a million years. But and they, then we're, we're, we're riding our bikes. But yeah. when they're riding their bikes down that hill, like that... Doesn't touch you just a smidge, like oh yeah, just going like down. You posted a picture on Facebook with all the bikes out front. Yeah, I mean just that, dude. We used to we would we had so many adventures. Like we would park our bikes at the edge of the railroad tracks, walk down the railroad Pre- tracks. Nineteen eighty five. It was yeah, all for about sure. the bikes. Yeah, of course, and just like where we go, and so. When I would see movies like this, gosh, it just I just wanted to be doing that. I mean, we would jump. We would make these little dirt piles and then jump the dirt piles and Sure. I mean, it was it was all about the bikes. I mean, my, you know, I But I Saturday mean, more morning, than the bikes. I would you guys get didn't... up in the morning, I'd get on my bike and my parents wouldn't see me until it was dark. Yeah, and you guys didn't go on adventures and like go discover shit yeah, and stuff. I mean, but I mean, we had a big sort of neighborhood that we could Go around in and get in a tiny bit of trouble, but not a lot of trouble. Man, we would go and like dig in trash cans at the grocery store, and then ride around, <laughs> and then and just do like, and then go to where like people were sniffing paint, and just go like, here's evidence of them sniffing paint. They left a paint can, and then we would carve our initials into the ditch. Hi! Touch that mirror again, I swear to God, I'm gonna smack you in the face. I love it because when I heard that as an adult, I thought, oh my gosh, he's trying to look at her vagina. Right. In the mirror. But, but later she says he was trying to look down my shirt. You can't look down a shirt with a with a rear view. Well, when they showed the the actual picture or the of the mirror, the mirror was looking at her skirt. Right. So that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, Walsh. Let us give you a little ride. Hold on. Here we go. The fucking wheels are falling off of the bike. They start to go so fast. The training wheels wheels fall off. And then he goes flying over the hill. So long, sucker. So going down a hill, 
really, really fast makes your training wheels fall off. But the, the car's going 40 miles an hour and his legs are going around like he's riding down the block, you know? <laughs> yeah, and he's pedaling. Yeah, the whole time. The whole time. Like, like, because yeah. that's how pedals work. Sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Because you have to pedal the yeah. same speed that you're. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the tires are moving. I love that the, that the restaurant and the lighthouse were there back in the day. Right. Like the lighthouse was there during the time that one eyed Willie <laughs> pirates had lighthouses. You didn't yeah. know that? That's I now it's hard for me to get past. Why One-Eyed is there Willie. a pirate ship on the fucking west coast? Right. My 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 cousin uh Adam pointed this out to me. He was like, Why is there a pirate ship on the west coast? And I was like, Holy shit. Yeah, why is there a pirate ship on the west coast? Couldn't it have come from a different direction? Or like something? they would have to have sailed down underneath because there's no Panama Canal at this point. They would have to sail down underneath South America and then sail all the way up to get there. So I, I I did look this up. There were pirate ships, but it certainly wasn't like a thing. Like it wasn't like like the Caribbean pirates where there was like tons of these ships. Not a whole lot of pirates on the West Coast, especially yeah. one the way the fuck up in Canada for crying out loud. Hey, wait a minute, Chunk. You know I got some naked pictures of your mom. Taking a bath? <laughs> Wanna buy him? What? Real cheap. <laughs> Thanks, Chunk. This is where it becomes Chunk's movie. It's just his movie. At this, no, but at this point, it becomes Chunk's when movie. When he's gluing the penis on backwards, that's not his movie. Yeah, Come that on. Is, that's amazing, but at this point, <laughs> it's Chunk's movie. And just like his adventure becomes everybody else's. Let's talk about the Fratellis real quick. Let's talk about the fact that I loved this band called the Fratellis, and I never put it together. That they're that named it was, after them? It never put it together. <laughs> Oh my god, that band is so good. Ah, I pride myself on getting references, but I never put that together. They go downstairs. You guys are crazy. You know, you guys are self destructive. There's a funny farm and it has your name written all over it, but I'm getting out of here. I smell ice cream. <laughs> I smell ice cream. Yeah, and he gets in there and he finds the ice cream, and there's another dead guy. Yeah. Also a cameraman. Did you know that? Oh, is he really? 100%. He's deader than shit. Uh, He has a bullet through his head. He's also a cameraman. That's funny. He sneaks out of the window before the Fratellis get down into the basement. Look, mister, I need a ride. My friends and I just had a run in with these really disgusting people. You might have heard of them, the Fratellis. Well, we found their hideout. Could you please, please take me to the sheriff's station? I can describe all three of them. <laughs> That's a stare. Oh, and dude. He's like, stop. I'm just a kid. I love, I love the fact, though, that, like, oh, this is so reminiscent of our National Lampoons thing because he goes, Bora Guta. Like, it's the same thing. Why don't you spill your guts? Tell us everything. Okay, I'll <laughs> This is so good. It's so good. In third grade, I cheated on my history exam. In fourth grade, I stole my Uncle Max's toupee and I glued it on my face when I played Moses in my Hebrew school play. In fifth grade, I knocked my sister Edie down the stairs and I blamed it on the dog. <laughs> he, he actually has a sister named Edie and he has a, an uncle named Max. That was... Like real people in his was life. he ad libbing or I, I can't imagine he was ad libbing, but I don't know why. Like he did have those people in his life, so I don't know if they used them in the script or if he. Just, they were just like, hey, or if he was riffing. If he was riffing, this kid is a fucking genius. Yep. So meanwhile, the kids are downstairs doing their thing, running through the sewers of and doing their thing. <laughs> I love the fucking fact that they're just doing their thing and. And and now we have we've we've got cargo. We've got two chicks that aren't Goonies. Hello. Paper mache bats out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, some of these bats look really real. No, not one bat. Not not one no. fucking bat. These are the same bats that Ozzy bit the head off of. <laughs> Probably. One hundred percent. So. So. The bats were paper mache. They actually had a cannon. They shot them out of what? It was a cannon. They shot. No, but the they bats hovered out. though. That, no, that's the, no. There was some that were they were hanging, but the ones that were sh- 
shooting oh, out of the hole out of the thing. was out of a cannon. It was just paper mache. Was was and then they were dangling the bats. Those were the worst ones. Like you could see the fucking string out from. Hey, look, candles. Wait, let me have it. Tanner, where are you going? I'm setting booty traps. Booby traps. That's what I said, Sam. I'm setting booby traps in case of anybody's following us. Like if we tell us so we can hear them coming. I think Billy Crystal stole that right. That's what I said. Still from say, fucking the goonies. Still say it all the time. <laughs> booty traps. That's what I say. I say booty twaps all the time. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chunk is still being interrogated. Thing I ever done. I mixed up all this fake puke at home. And then I went to this movie theater, hid the puke in my jacket, climbed up to the balcony, and then, then I made a noise like this. <laughs> Beginning to like this kid, Mike. <laughs> You're right. It's the chunk movie. It's the chunk it really movie. Is. About that time, they get to the wishing well. This is where the movie, uh, you know, he is, and he has his speech, and Mikey is being the greatest. Goonies person never of say all time. die. Right, but he, his speech, he's like, that's their time. This is our time. And people are throwing coins in. The guy throws a coin in, and and uh, Troy throws a coin in because he's gonna make it with Andy. Andy, yo, Goonie! And, and he calls her a Goonie. It's <laughs> the worst. Thing what ever. the fuck, Andy, man? Andy, you Goonie! <laughs> That's really good, by the way. Dude. He said Actually make it twice. Over. It was worse than Grease too. That line. Grease 2 was bad. Trust me. Overall, Grease 2 was the worst movie ever in the whole entire no, world. No, Grease 2 Back is off, great. You're not seeing that song at me ever again. It's the worst. But what? he just sings. Was it Girls Did you of say all that seasons? some song from Grease I'll was the worst? I'll be your girl Grease for oh, Grease all seasons. Two. Grease 2. Oh, all stop, the stop. year through. No, stop it. He loves your girl this for all the This is the worst movie ever made. No. He sings that song <laughs> at me. Like no. a punishment. No. We're gonna bowl no. tonight. Stop it. We're gonna score stop it. tonight. Tell him to stop it. No, he's this about, is he's about to do cool right To be a cool. See, I knew it. I knew it. Rider. Oh, I called a that. Cool this is terrible. Cool I know. No. This is my life if he's every cool day. enough, he can burn mad through him. Would you get mad if he sang Grease 1 to you? Because every song in Grease 1 is amazing. He wouldn't because it's not the worst. Rema, Rema, Rema. Ding, da, bomb. Shoo, bop, shoo, bop. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chang, chang. Chang, 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 da, bop. Do, bop, da, do, do. That's good. Yeah, but no. Stop singing shitty songs, Jarrett. Yeah. Reproduction. Pre-production. That's Grease 2. Put your pollen tube to work. This is terrible. Reproduction. Stop it. Yeah, it's terrible. Oh, I think I'm gonna throw up. That's the fucking best. No. Just, welcome to my Grease life. Grease 2 is awful. You know what's worse, It's Rich? not awful. You know what's it's worse? terrible. Richard, he's taught the children to like Grease 2. No. I'm not numbered by a horrible movie. There taste. is nothing to like about Grease 2. Nobody Don't likes Grease ever two. sing Grease 2 ever again. Please no, me. no, no, no. Grease 2 is not good. I don't, everyone out there yelling at me right now saying Grease 2 is good. I forbid you to listen to this podcast. We're going to bowl tonight. No. Oh, We're going to skull no. tonight. Every day of my life. How did we get on this subject? God damn it. I hate this movie. Grease 1 only. That's it. Stop Thank watching you. after Thank that. Thank you. No remakes. Nothing. Ah. Uh, Andy! Yo, Goody! It's so silly. <laughs> And she sends the jacket up. Now, let's talk about Sloth. I hadn't figured out who this actor is, but this guy. He's not he, an actor. He's a football player. Yeah, but he is an actor. But, dude, he's in so much shit. Like four. This, he, this guy four is Four pieces of shit. This guy is in four shits. Uh, do you know he couldn't even do all the stunts because his body was all messed up? He was in Ice Pirates. So North Dallas. Oh, he was in One Crazy Summer. All right, he was in a lot of shit. All right. Miami Vice. So he was in North Dallas 40, which is one of the greatest movies of all time. He was in Ice Pirates, 
also one of the greatest movies of all time. You never seen Ice, Ice Pirates? Pirates? Oh, we should do Ice, Ice Pirates. Oh yeah, we're two men. Are not men at all. Talk about movies, and one guy <laughs> likes to touch dicks. But it's not rich. It is rich. <laughs> that loves it's to totally touch not dicks. rich. The guy that loves to touch dicks, his the dick name is touch Rich. Is not rich. The it's rich. the other guy. <laughs> this movie, this movie is called. Uh, yeah, I, I, talk, I, I think so the person dick. who's talking about touching the dicks is probably the guy that wants to touch dicks. Okay, let's take an honest inventory of who's touched more. Uh, I think it's dukes. the guy that's reached over his son and made sure it wasn't pissing in his face. I think that might be the guy. I don't know. It doesn't count if you touch your son's dick. I think it might count. How many dicks? How many dicks you outside made fun of, of me for jerking the tears? <laughs> how many dicks have you touched? Sans uh, people you're related to. I've never touched another man's dick. Are I don't you know what. Serious? The fact that you're going, are you serious? Should tell everybody listening that you're the guy that touches all the dicks. Uh, That's true. Like, I'm a dick Thank toucher. you, Casey. Yeah, from way back. I yeah. really feel like Casey gets my back more than she gets yours. Yeah, see, and when actually, Jerry gets my back, it's usually because he wants to touch my dick. No, it's usually because I don't want you to get your fucking ass kicked. <laughs> That might be true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, where the fuck are? Oh yeah. Dog, I got a baby Ruth, right. sir. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And now uh-huh. the final crowd uh-huh. coach to this kid. Baby. We'll talk about uh-huh. it. You know what? <laughs> Here's the thing that I actually didn't know that baby Ruth was a candy bar until what? Caddyshack. I really didn't. Oh, like, when I, he fished yeah. it out of the pool. Yeah, I mean, I knew who Babe Ruth was. Yeah, Man, I, think I gotta that was say, probably my first experience too. Geez, geez, Mister, you're even hungrier than I am. All right, let's fast forward. Data falls down this. this There's hole. an adventure ride. It's an adventure. <laughs> Is he dead? Pinches of pal! You guys! You I'm guys. saved by my pinches of pal! His yeah. fucking teeth. Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I love that they're like from the 99 cent aisle at Party City. <laughs> it's so a little too. tiny it's little spring so on them. amazing. Yeah. And 100%. I'm just thinking as I'm watching this by myself, I'm going, what the fuck are Dude, you Dude, when serious? I was when I was watching this for the first time ever as a kid, though, uh-huh. I was like, I should be able to invent shit like right, that. Right, right. Like, Let me do that. No, I I'm get gonna... it. This is a cartoon. This is a cartoon right. with live action characters. You just hate this movie. I don't like it now. Yes. I. You, but you don't like get the, the fact memory that of it. You don't get the fact that it means a lot to a lot of people. No, I mean, it. I think it meant a lot to me, but through no, proxy. No, you, you've not even fucking said that it meant a lot to you, P.S. No, no, I'm saying through proxy. Like, I, I watched it. I didn't, like, I think I enjoyed it. But then the buildup of everyone talking about how much they loved it made me go, it's amazing. It's so awesome. Here's what it is. There is a moment in time where you're a kid. And you get to go on this fucking amazing journey. When I watched it through my daughter's eyes, it was awesome. When I watched it through yeah. my eyes, it sucked balls. That's what I'm saying. What if you watched it through your daughter's eyes while she was sucking balls? <laughs> would that be asshole. Would that be super weird? All right, I'm leaving this in, and you are going to be the that, perv for sure. No, but I'm just asking. I mean, would that be super weird? Or I'm just saying. I mean, she's obviously gone through. There might be a there stuff. might be a female flying in from California to kick your ass. Well, 100 percent though, but it could happen. I mean, the, 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 dude, I know for a fact a girl got fingered during this movie okay, when I first saw it. What the? F- no, I mean when I first saw it, a girl got fingered for oh, sure. You fingered a girl during the movie. I did not. No, I did not. Uh, you were next to a guy. No, that had- I did not. No, I did not. Wait, what about the first kiss? What? What is it? Does Bram wear braces? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Steph, it was beautiful. <laughs> next time you kiss him, do it with your eyes open. It's a whole different experience. Who was your first kiss? At first French, French kiss. kiss with tongue and shit? Stephanie Fife. Okay, mine was Michelle Gidden, Gidden, was Gidden's bad. Or Gibbons or something like that. It was in uh, Louisiana. It was in seventh grade. It wasn't Kansas. Yeah. No, seventh grade, and um, and her tongue was really rough. It was like a cat tongue. Yeah, I feel like you're just not used I to weird like tongue that. stuff. Really? 
And that's the only tongue I've ever you're, experienced you're that was that? rough like that. And that's why you're allergic to cats. Yeah, and we were, and and I was the worst kisser ever. I like was we were just constantly jamming tongues. You know what I mean? It's like how far we could get it down and moving it around. Like, yeah, to it like was get it into bad. each other's yeah. mouth. And it wasn't until I saw, which wasn't like maybe not even a year later, I saw <laughs> Kirk Cameron kissing on screen his girlfriend. I can't remember who the girl was, but he was kissing her, and I was like. Oh wow, that seems a lot different than what I'm doing. And then from then on, I was like, oh, "Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it." Okay, so literally after, literally, literally after the first kiss, they slide down a fucking slide, and the movie's over. The Fratelli brothers like hit the little pole and hit their crush their nuts, and they kind of climb up, and then there's the organ, and then they get through the organ, they slide down the slide, and it's over. The movie's over. I did feel like that when I was a kid, uh, the journey seemed longer. Like Way longer. Yeah. When I was longer. a kid, I felt the same way. I thought this was this big, long, elaborate. Epic. 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 And it was like the shortest thing ever. Yeah. I feel like I can't take Sean Astin seriously as an actor. Why? Other than like, obviously this movie because he's a kid. That's fine. But like Lord of the Rings, great. Because he's a little... You missed Rudy. Midget. I, Rudy, okay. Rudy, Rudy, Lord of the Rings, and this movie, every other movie he's in, I can't take him seriously, though. He's he's like so Samwise, Ganji, and Goonies, and Rudy. He's like so one of those three that when he does like a serious role, like he was on... Was he, he was on, on The good, Strain. No, he was on 24. Yeah, The Strain, the first season of The Strain, I couldn't take him seriously. I actually watched the first season of The Strain. And I couldn't take him seriously. They killed him off pretty early. And and the twenty four he was on. He was like some political advisor or something. And I just I just can't take him seriously as an actor because of Rudy and Lord of the Rings, basically. But uh, Fifty First Dates he was amazing in because so good because he was like this pumping iron dude. Speech, and, speech impediment guy. He was guy. huge. He was he was so ripped in that movie. <laughs> yeah, but he like, but he was yeah, yeah, but he had, he had yeah, his, like, it his, was like, greatness. List. That movie is one of my favorite all time. Have you seen the movie? Which one? Fifty First Dates. No, one of the and I actually cried in the movie. Uh, one of the best movies it's, it's, I've it's ever a, seen. A, it's a, no, it's a Adam Sandler Drew Barrymore movie. Yeah, that Adam one? Sandler Drew Barrymore. I cannot stand Drew Barrymore, but I love the movie despite her. I love her. She's a weird S thing that I have. With, like, she's the, oh, she's a horrible s- actress. Horrible actress. Okay, so they slide through, they they drop in the water, and then they hit the octopus scene. Do you remember the octopus scene? No, I don't, actually. It got cut. That's why. Yeah, it's I don't It's a cut either. scene. Yeah. That, we're, that, we're both like, yeah, totally. TBS uh, aired that scene, actually, the full scene. The octopus was some of the worst. It wasn't special effects. It was practical effects. Terrible practical effects. It's funny effects. because at the end. The worst looking octopus I've ever seen in my life. They entire. actually say, you know, what was the. About the uh, octopus, right. Yeah. Yeah. What was the worst part, the, or like the? Yeah, and they say something about the octopus. It, yeah. it was, it was bad. It. I'm glad they cut it, yeah. but it certainly, it certainly made the movie shorter. They like, did. They needed something. They needed more stuff. They I needed they more. Did. I think they knew that they had everybody of that age roped did. in. And then you know they, they got you know in the what? ship. You know what the thing is is that we're the same age. There has to be a reason that this movie is so important to everybody else but you. It's it's. It's the Indiana Jones of for kids. It's it's that sort of adventure, treasure map, um, uh, you know, um, these weird ancient obstacles that that have been set in place for you know hundreds of years and a hundred years. And I mean, it's you've never. I mean, have you? You've never seen Indiana Jones? I've seen uh, Raiders of the Lost okay. Ark. Yeah, I mean, you saw it once. Apparently not. Yeah, one or two times. Why, why didn't Why didn't that resonate with you? I mean, that movie is huge. That's one of my favorite movies of this all time. This movie is huge. You know, it made sixty nine million dollars. What did Raiders of the Lost Ark make? <laughs> Fucking killed. I uh, mean, it's like I one of the top one hundred movies. <laughs> is it really? Oh God, yeah. Of course. Is Goonies not? No, not one of the top hundred no, movies of no, all time. No, no, no. no you no. sure? I'm, I'm pulling it out of my ass, but I'm I, I would head. probably bet my house on that. 
Anyway, so they get they get into the ship. They find the gold. So the Fertellis get there, make them walk the plank, but luckily... Chuck! No! Captain Chuck! But uh, Joey Pants doesn't wear a toupee. And we spent the money on Francis's toupee! I don't wear a hairpiece! As his hairpiece is falling off of him. I love to say that. Yeah, so they, they, they get off the plank, they get they bust through the little wall because Sloth can hold a rock open or something. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, we lost all the treasure. The thing was is they gave they lost the treasure because they gave it to the Fratellis. The Fratellis were on the beach with them. Yeah. It, this, it was stupid. There's the boat. We know where the boat is, even if the boat wasn't sailing away. It's right in this rock, and it's filled with treasure, and we found it. We discovered Follow it. us. Yeah. Who, who cares if you take our house? We are billionaires. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck cares about this house anymore? Right. We're billionaires. <laughs> and all I know is Chunk doesn't have to actually take Sloth home. You're going to live with me now. Huh? Yeah, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you. Because I love you. <laughs> I love you, Chunk. Oh, I love you, Sloth. That is my, that's my favorite line in the movie. I love you, Chunk. <laughs> I love that he hasn't consulted his mother yet. Because I love you. He hasn't even consulted his mother. He just, I know. Didn't ask anybody. I'm taking you home with me. You're going to yeah, but he's the me. stereotypical fat kid. That can, it's basically like South Park. Like Stop he can do whatever he wants. On Dude, the I was fat and I couldn't even have friends spend the night. Dude, I'm a fat kid for Christ's <laughs> Stop sake. Stop projecting on I the I can chunk. do whatever I want. But your mom let you have friends sleep over. I mean, so, and then, the, off topic and then there's the deadbeat dad that's going to just sponge off his kid from now on. Yeah, Dad, it's my marble bag. The fertility forgot to check it. See, I emptied out the marbles and I put the jewels in. We don't have to leave the goondocks. Uh, there'll be no more signing. The goondocks. We don't have to leave the goondocks. Again. So he, throw, he, throw, he rips up the paper and throws it in the air, and then, then there's like a cannon behind him that like shoots more paper in yeah. the air did it's, you see that it's the paper cannon it's the paper cannon <laughs> anytime you ever rip up a paper and throw it in there there's always a cannon behind you i think the great thing about this movie is the camaraderie like just the fact that they're just they're uh, all these dudes all these kids are so in tune with one another and they're great friends and they're on this adventure and they they do it. They 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 work together. They pick up a, a couple of people along the way, and it's it's actually a pretty great movie, even now. All right, Rich, you got any plugs? Yeah. Uh, so we got uh, Jarrett goes to the movies dot com. Uh, on Twitter, we are at Jarrett Movies. On Facebook, we are Facebook dot com slash Jarrett Goes to the Movies. Um, we got we have a Tumblr now. We do. Tumblr uh, Jarrett Goes to the Movies dot Tumblr dot com. Or just like is that a thing? Like, yeah, what it happens is. on there? Okay. And Pinterest, we are Pinterest dot com slash Jarrett Movies. Oh my God, we have so many arts and crafts to do. We do. We we have all of our cross stitch. All of that shit. Um, anything else? Go to compose.com, K O M P O Z.com. Yep. Slash Rich Coleman, all one word. Yep. And be a friend of Rich. Yep. And add some shit to his stuff. Yeah. Sing on or sing on and play on it, whatever. Uh, Rich, what is your Twitter? Rich underscore Coleman. My name is Jarrett. Uh, follow me at J A R E T 2113. Uh, we also have the Bowling for Soup Christmas sweater. It They're is awesome. out. They look yeah, great. They are so good. And uh, go check that out. And uh, I don't think that I have anything Jared else. JarrettReddick.com's got all your links on there. Thank you. Uh, and support us. So um, if you go to JarrettGoesToTheMovies.com, there's a support us uh, link on there that you yeah. can click on and and, and help us uh, keep this going. We're trying to keep it good. Because we gonna, can't keep doing it for free. We're going to get bigger and bigger. But we'd like to keep giving it to you for free. We're just going to eat pizza. Right. So if you could uh, support us, that'd be, be awesome. Yeah. And we have some... Um, some extra content that will, uh, uh, you know, for yeah. people that give five bucks to us. Yeah.